Today we are at Mississauga, Ontario's Living Arts Centre for a special world premiere screening of director Hemant Bhatia's Inroads of India. This film is an impressive and thoughtful documentary of India's culture, heritage and magnificence. Hemant Bhatia's Inroads of India. My name is Tushar Anatkat for those who don't know me. I am the host MC for the evening and on behalf of VIEW Canada. Before that, we are humbled to announce that this event is in support of Sick Kids Foundation and all the money raised from the donations collected from the two screenings tonight will proceed towards a noble cause. I'd like to call upon the man behind this event, the star of the evening and the director of tonight's documentary film, In Roads of India, none other but Hemant Desai. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. With sincere humility, I thank you all for being here and supporting the world premiere of my directorial debut of the feature documentary in Roads of India. Today is a very special day for me as the dream which I saw five years back has become a reality. Today, it has not been possible without the help and support of my team members, especially Sam, Lakiji, Tushar, Manorji, Pinkiji, and Ashfaq Bhai. Uh, special thanks to our esteemed guest of honor, uh, Mr. B. Thakgar and Mr. Gurbak Singh Mali, Member of Parliament for making time for this event and gracing the occasion. <clears throat> I shouldn't take much time speaking and uh, let you watch the film first. After the screening, we would gladly share behind the camera story with you and we'll be able to, and we'll be available for the Q&A session. I hope you enjoy the film uh, as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite our guest of honor, Mr. B. Tugger, to come upon the dais and untie the ribbon and inaugurate the world premiere of the film Inroads of India. I stopped by at a sweet shop as it is customary to bring sweets when you're invited over to somebody's house. There are many diverse cultures in India and they have different ways of celebrating Diwali. I was really excited to experience the South Indian way of celebrating the festival of lights which is called Diwali. My friend Babli comes from the city of Mangalore which is in the state of Karnataka in the south of India. During the festival of Diwali people usually decorate the entrance of their homes with a beautiful rangoli. I was very glad to see Babli and his family dressed up in a traditional South Indian way to celebrate uh, the Diwali festival. And uh, they took me to their prayer room where I saw the, uh, the temple which was made of silver. I needed some help, so Babli's wife volunteered to help me out. It was very different from the normal Indian sweets available off the shelf. My friends Ashit and Neha joined me at Babli's place for the Diwali celebrations as they too had not experienced the South Indian style of celebration. Neha volunteered to show me around for a few days, so we decided to start off from uh, the Gateway of India. She insisted that I see the Gateway of India from sea as the uh, view from there looks amazing. The Gateway of India looked spectacular. This monument was built from yellow basalt and reinforced concrete. The Gateway of India was built to commemorate the visit of King George V and Queen Mary to Bombay in December 1911.
the naval dockyard is the premier ship repair yard of the Indian Navy. With a history of 200 years, it is one of the largest kind in Asia. The yard is the frontliner in technology for repair of ships. The dockyard is spread over 138 acres of land overlooking the gateway of India. It has 4 kilometers of jetties and wharves. Specialized repairs and testing facilities are also available. The salty air of the Arabian Sea hitting my face gave me a nostalgic feeling, reminding me of the good old days when I used to travel by the ferry for a picnic to the Elephanta Caves with my family and friends. Of car horns, which cost us just five dollars. <laughs> We got interested in a mini fan, which looked kind of cute. Chor Bazaar also carries stuff such as gym equipment, old spanners and hardware items. I was really excited to visit one of my favorite places, which is the Canary Caves, and it is located in the north of Mumbai. I go for refuge in Buddha. The Canary Caves have a special place in my heart. My most cherished memories have been of the time me and my family spent here. It brought back good memories of the past. Canary comes from the Sanskrit word Krishnagiri, generally meaning black in color. The caves were chiseled out of a massive basaltic rock. Canary caves date from 1st century BC to 9th century CE. The earliest caves are 109 tiny rock-cut cells carved in the side of a hill. The Canary caves are a marvelous architectural feat. While going further up the hill, you would come across many water courses that reveal the ancient water system. Neha was really impressed with the Buddhist philosophy. She pledged to include Buddhism as a part of her life. Yeah, and you are not wearing the proper shoes. Proper shoes, track and all. If yeah. I would have wear that, I would have been much more comfortable. Yeah. It's really nice. Uh, I mean, you should have uh, come to this place you know, a long time ago. Being I never Bombay. knew that this is place. It's I knew nice. National Park, yeah. but Canary Caves kind of thing I've never heard of. and reliable, King Travel is serving the community to provide travel facilities around the world and are authorized agents of all major airlines. King Travel is authorized retail and wholesale agents for Umrah packages. With the help of experienced and courteous staff at King Travel, you will enjoy your Umrah. For special fares and packages to suit your needs, please call King Travel 905-624-8555 or toll free at 1-800-844-KING. Romance, the dance, Hindi films, ta. I'm now with director Heman Bhatia in his directorial debut of Inroads of India. Heman, you've got an impressive uh, CV in India, acting in theater and in film. What brings you to Canada and setting up Visions Unlimited and now directing this big travel documentary? The answer to your question is family. They say family comes first, so that's the reason uh, why I'm here. My wife opted to come here with the, the kids. And uh, yeah, I did follow up with them. And uh, uh, that's how, yeah, I came to Canada. But uh, I've, like how they al always say that North America is a land of opportunities. So I came here um, two or three years, how we all immigrants struggle to get on with our lives. But then uh, my passion came up and it said, hey, Mr. Bhatia, what are you doing? I mean, you're. It, uh, I mean, what were you doing there and what are you doing here now? So I said, okay, let's get back to it and 
and uh, I decided to, uh, actually I had a few, um, um, I had a talk with a couple of friends of mine and they always used to, you know, remember India, India as this, India as that. And uh, then I thought like, yeah, why not, you know, make a film and uh, showcase India to the people here. Also to the new generation, the third generation that's, that's come, uh, I mean, that's brought up here. They would like to see, you know, what's India about. There's a lot of, I felt there was a lot of apprehension within people that uh, probably have some, you know, doubts about India, you know, it's not a safe place and we can't go and, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, different questions from people. They wanted to explore India, like, you know, we go, we see our relatives and we're back and that's much, that, that, that is much about India. We, we don't want to, like, we don't know much about India. So, yeah, the, it gave me an idea. I thought, okay, let me do a video synopsis. I went back, I wrote down the script, I did a video synopsis and I said, okay, let me, get that here and uh, hopefully something will work out but when I came here I showed it to a couple of channels they just loved the idea they're saying yeah sure why don't you go ahead and do it so that's how I went back and uh, the entire journey transpired uh, earlier I thought I'll just make it into a documentary mm -hmm. but then uh, when I was traveling it was such a wonderful experience you know going and seeing different people and uh, uh, seeing places and, I mean it was just like I was discovering new things every time I was going to a new place so I said, okay, let's film that and let, let's make Inroads of India. So that's how it came up. Now, the, the name Inroads, um, we understand uh, you, you really have gone to some of the inroads and some of the back roads of India. You've, you're showing a totally different um, perspective uh, of India. To talk a little bit about this. Yeah, actually, um, uh, pretty much what you're saying is correct because when we go to India, we just land up in the larger cities like Mumbai or Delhi or somebody's from uh, Chennai or Calcutta. Nobody travels to the interior of uh, India. They don't, they don't see like, okay, you know, there could be so many more interesting things. What about the culture, how the people live, how they eat, what do they do? And uh, there, there's so much of uh, historical uh, uh, I can say wealth that is available and uh, every time I would go I would say uh, uh, sometimes I couldn't even like I, I try to research and I couldn't find that stuff and I would ask the people in the, in the village you know what what is interesting here I say, okay, you know there is a darga like a Kamal Ali Darvesh darga you go there and you will find the circular stone which is like 150 kgs and all you have to do is just 11 people have to touch the fingers below the stone and take his name and it lifts up in the air. Mm -hmm. So that was like something, I couldn't believe it. Come on, I mean, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. So I went there and then, of course, when I experienced that thing, I could feel the energy, the power that was in that place. So yeah, there are so many like mystical and you know, things that science can't uh, understand what this is about. Uh, well, uh, what I plan to do next is uh, if uh, people uh, go well with this idea, of course I do want to uh, travel to different uh, parts of India. Like I just started off with Maharashtra. That's uh, because I'm from Mumbai, so Maharashtra is my state. Mm -hmm. I did uh, cover that. I went and saw uh, like Ajanta Lora, which I was just like, I used to hear when I was a kid or read it in the history books. It was such a beautiful experience. So I do, of course, want to showcase India, bring the people of India in the front of the world and show them that, okay, uh, India is, you know, some people say India's image is not clean, it's not good, but, but hey, you know, besides the point, see there is something beyond that also. So, of course, India India is, is rich in culture. It's, it's uh, probably a, uh, a culture that is more than 2,000 years old and you have all that history uh, backing it up. What, what are some, a uh, couple of the specific things that um, viewers might see in this film that they won't ordinarily see in, in, in a travel documentary? Um, like I told you, the Kamal Ali Darvesh uh, Darga is there, and then uh, you'll see a mini Taj Mahal, which I saw for the first time myself. I didn't even know, like, living in uh, Mumbai and <laughs> like in Maharashtra, there could be a mini Taj Mahal. And I say, oh my God, I, I never heard about it. So let's go and see it. And it was really there, it was beautiful. And um, what can I tell you? I mean, it's, it's every, every, every few minutes you're going to see something different. 
Well, you know, as you say, it's, it's emotional for you. It's very, very special. I mean, you, you've acted uh, for so long. You've also done some academic work here in, 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 in Toronto. And, and this is your directorial debut. Right. And uh, it's also the world premiere of, of, of something that, that you've really created. Yeah. This is all yours. And so it's really special. And, and we certainly understand that. That's very true. I'm, I'm really, very passionate about this. And, uh, and, like I, and like you say, I keep on getting emotional mm -hmm. <laughs> when I talk about it. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm really thankful to all the people for coming here and uh, watching the film and giving me so much of support. And we thank you for taking the time. Um, this is a very special evening for you, and we wish you uh, success in, in, in continuing your career, whether it's in directing or, or acting or any other form, but just keep making films. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's director Hemant Bhatia talking with us here at this special world premiere screening of In Roads of India. Directed by Heeman Patya. Let's go for a ride. Frontier Heritage, a perfect blend of beauty and elegance. Today we are in Mississauga, Ontario's Living Arts Centre for a special world premiere screening of Hemant Bhatia's In Roads of India. This is an impressive and thoughtful film that showcases India's culture, heritage and its magnificence. Hemant Bhatia's directorial debut, In Roads of India. The film, who is the founder of Visions Unlimited Canada, who has extensive experience in production, direction, acting, and writing. He has been resourceful in the completion of the following projects. He's worked with um, Wanjare, a Punjabi serial, and uh, he's also done some acting with uh, Mahesh Bhatt, the renowned Bollywood actor, in a series called Mouthful of Sky. He was in Flight 182, director Stotara Gunarsan. Dilme Kala, again another uh, series directed by Asha Parekh. Aurath, directed by BR Films, Ahad, Hindustan Ki Kasam. And he's done some theater as well. And his academic achievements include producing and directing independent filmmaking at George Brown and screenplay again at George Brown and Acting, Acting Institute of H. Mahogan. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and let's welcome Hemant Bhatia. <laughs> I'm going to now introduce our guest of honor, Mr. Bhagat Tagar. The India with all its glory, splendor, contrast, and explorations has much more to contribute to the world. And if I look back and you look back and reflect back your childhood and your flight away from India to these green pastures, which we at that time thought, and think what India has done. It's one of the superpowers now, but their economic growth of nearly, I think, 6% on average for the last five years tremendous. Still, as I said, there's a contrast. Poverty, bureaucracy, corruption, which we can, while we are away from India, can make a contribution so that the young people like Hammond can go back and bring back and take back some of the Jagterho message to the people who are back in there. I think that's very, very important. Every story, every tale, breathe many other small stories. And if we can bring those stories here and take them back to India so that we can be the watchmen or the guardians who can shout loud to those people who are in politics, and 
power of authority and say, look, they have a tremendous richness in there, but it's their duty to make it ethical, to make it worthwhile, make it better for the coming generations to come. So the stories which we should here look at, when you go back to India, you see India with the different eyes. You know, you see the poverty, but we don't really understand when we are living in India. When you go back and make a trip like Hamid has made, it hurts you. <coughs> you know, the people with all their belongings in a bundle tied up, and that little bundle with all the life belongings they have becomes their pillow to sleep on the street. I think this has to be addressed. And we can do it. The way to do it is that in these countries, we have some resources. We should get together, and there should be some sort of organization that these little stories, these little tales could be told. They could be told to the people back at our, in our motherland, in India. And we can give that message of Jag Terho, and that doesn't cost us much. So with that, I thank Hamid, thank you, and really thanks for everybody who was involved in this. We have tremendous resources, intellectual, financial, and people with great abilities and talents. Now, we all work. So can you pull that A lot door? of businesses make a lot of money, and we pay taxes. We park a car, and we'll get a ticket, we'll pay that ticket. But if we can take these little resources, what we need actually, the money comes if you have an organization. You know, there are organizations we raise, raise tremendous amount of money. Really, in Panorama India, when I was there, we, we raised 78,000 in one night. At Pile Banquet Hall, we filled it up. And we gave it to the uh, hospital, and we gave it to the people who died when the Indian parliament was attacked. Mm -hmm. You know, those, those, those people. <laughs> so I think money is not a really serious problem in our community. What we need is a leadership and a few people to come together and start that journey. The money comes. But there is a need for these documentaries. For my generation, more for the younger generation. We're going to grow up. And there are many small tales of the Indian history to be shown. 1947 is one. India will never forget that. It will always be there. At that corner of the whole history, India changed. The time when we can say even the gods cried. The Punjab was bleeding. Those tales has to be told. They should be told properly. Because the will of the politicians you know what happened in 1947. And our gen younger generation should know those stories. And they will only know if we leave that for them, if we take the leadership. So what I'm saying, all we need is a four or five people to take the leadership. Money can be raised. It's not an issue. Thank you. 40 hours of footage, and uh, they were the biggest challenge uh, to cut it short was to choose which stories to tell. There's there's so many things that happened uh, off screen. There's so many stories that didn't make it uh, in this hour and 20 minutes. So I think that was the biggest challenge is uh, try to decide what is the best uh, best what are the best stories that we could keep in the model of the film. So I think that was the most. Of it. All all the footage that was shot was around sort sort of shot generally around like. Uh, certain areas like Ajanta and Olora, um, and we had so much, so much, uh, so much information. There's so many clips, and um, I think we we chose the best 
we chose uh, the clips that we thought completely summarize what the, the film's about. Because uh, this, is, this is a film that's uh, a personal journey. Right. Um, and there were some, uh, some uh, clips that uh, were, were good, but it wasn't, it wasn't the vision of the film. So we had to exclude them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I actually uh, never imagined that, uh, well, like what you said, rediscovering myself is, is, is like rediscovering India itself. I went all the way and um, uh, I had this thought in my mind that uh, why not um, see all these places which I always dreamt of going when I was uh, going through my history books when I was young. I didn't forget them, I still remembered them. So like how I discovered these new things which you, which you were seeing, which you just saw, I, I had seen them f uh, for the first time myself. So yeah, it was kind of rediscovering that, oh my God, like I, even I can do this, I can, I mean, Sure, like I'm, I'm seeing something really different. Uh, see all these places which I always dreamt of going when I was uh, going through my history books when I was young. So I didn't forget them. I still remembered them. So, like how I discovered these new things which you which you're seeing, which you just saw, I I had seen them f uh, for the first time myself. So yeah, it was kind of rediscovering that. Oh my God, like I, even I can do this. I can. I mean, sure, like I'm, I'm seeing something really different. So if you uh, saw some of the things for the first time, yeah. um, was it part of the model? As in, did you plan that I'm going to go and uh, see these new places, or you just discovered them while you were shooting? Frankly speaking, I had everything on, uh, I had all the information. I knew that this is how I'm going to go about traveling to in these places and, and looking. But uh, the thing is that when I would go to these small places and I would talk to these villagers and I would ask them, is there like something interesting you want to tell me? What's, what's around here? So then, like the Kamal, Kamar Ali Darwesh uh, Darga, I never knew about that. I heard, but uh, I mean, I was not like, okay, come on. I mean, a stone coming up in air. I mean, what's that? Something, you know, it's 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 not unbelievable. But uh, when I when I went there and I experienced the energy there, the place had such a wonderful energy. I was amazed. Mm -hmm. so look at that, like, uh, and I, I said, let me try it myself. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was rediscovering myself also as a person that I could uh, go and do this kind of a thing. I'm not a journalist like you, Daryl. <laughs> so but the question uh, was, what did you learn about yourself? Um, I, learned, I learned one thing that, uh, yeah, I can, I can surely direct. And what, as uh, Divya, Vidya mentioned, that there are so many states of India, and we, would, we could make maybe 30 episodes about the 30 different states. It's all about financing, you know, logistics and budgeting. And I'm sure Heman's going to get lucky. So, f so far, he's done the great job. I have my executive producer. His name is Mr. Lucky. So I, get, I'm, I guess I'm going to get lucky. <laughs> well, to start off with, uh, we did, we did a, uh, I wrote down the story first. Of course, I outlined the, the places that I wanted to go and visit. And um, I did a video synopsis before I went into the uh, filming of the actual film. So I went to a lot of places that I was planning to go to. But uh, uh, the interior of uh, Maharashtra, I, I never planned to do that. I knew it, it was on the agenda that, OK, yeah, I have to go here. But uh, around uh, Mumbai, I did just did a shot, like a, a, a 20 minutes uh, video synopsis of that. And uh, we did that. And uh, I, I, I spoke to my very good friend, uh, Ashwag Bhai, and I took his review on that. Ashwag Bhai, what do you think about this? And uh, uh, he said, I mean, this looks good, Hemant. I mean, why don't you venture out further and try and work it out? So that's how I, I, made, a, I made a plan to go to India. Now, going to India is OK, fine, but what about the cost? The, the cost of flying to India is uh, $1,300. And uh, I didn't have uh, with me that kind of money because the cheapest um, flight you mean. Cheapest <laughs> flight. So why not approach the airlines? Mm -hmm. Went to Jet Airways, and uh, I mean, my luck was good. Probably they agreed to, f to give me a, a, a ticket to India. And they said, OK, we'll fund you. Go ahead and do it. And uh, I don't know if Mr. Justin is still working with them. I really appreciate uh, Yeah, OK, he's not. Mr. Gosling, I mean, uh, I, I remember him. I showed him. When I showed him the video synopsis, uh, he saw a shot where I I had taken a shot in downtown uh, Mumbai. That is, um, I think so, around um, what is this place, Marine Lines. And he's looking at the shot. And are you sure this is Marine Lines? How come this is so empty? <laughs> I said I went during the hours when nobody was uh, there. So saying that's good.